Yeah, man. Let's All go right, do man, this. Let's go do it. Y'all got to come back here at 1230. We're doing things. First, I want to start by thanking Ally for uh, the opportunity to get everybody together today. They got us a great uh, Nashville-style lunch over here. We're excited for Ally. Excited, obviously, to be partnered with them and all the things they do for us. It's great lunch. It's, it's just testament of bringing some of that back here in the shop and thanking all of you. This young man uh, beside me, if you watched him grow through our company, you can certainly appreciate uh, you know, what he is today and what he brings to our company and how he represents great partners like Ally and Hendrick Motorsports and, and all of you at the track. So we are very excited to announce to you today that uh, we have signed Alex uh, to a two-year contract through 2023. How about a round of applause for this guy? Super thankful for the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun working with you guys and really proud to, uh, to get to continue to drive the Ally 48 car. No, no, not all right! If you love me, please don't judge me Got my hands tied, the power's above me Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just a puppet here If you wanna place blame, then look to the puppeteer So, one of the worst kept secrets in the garage for Henrik Motorsports is now officially a done deal. I think we all knew this extension was coming. It wasn't a matter of if, but a matter of when. So, the news came out a couple hours ago that it is now official. Alex Bowman has officially, or Bowman fed in this situation, has been extended till 2023. So Bowman has now gone a two-year extension with Henrik Motorsports. So his contract lines up perfectly with how long Ally is sponsored with the 48 car. I mean, here's hoping Bowman doesn't kill the Ally sponsorship too, since the trend has been everything that Bowman touches dies. In terms of tracks, car numbers, sponsorships, everything. And yeah, I think we've gone over this a number of times already. So yeah, I mean, I mean Bowman deserves the extension. He's had some really solid runs this year. Like this year for Bowman though, despite the two wins, Bowman's been either hit, miss, or meh. Like I'm looking at Bowman in the chase. I'm pretty confident. Like I have faith that at least two Henrik cars will make the final four this year. Bowman's the one question mark I have at making the final four. Like for the chase this year, I think Bowman's either boom or bust. I mean, the one issue Bowman had last year in the chase was he had a very, he had the lack of bonus points entering the chase, so his good runs really didn't mean shit when he was already in the hole. But yeah, maybe Bowman gets hot at the right time again in the chase. We'll have to see what happens in the fall. So yeah, Bowman's locked up, so that means that this, the four car lineup of Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, William Byron, and Alex Bowman, or in this case, General Elliott. Bowman Fett, Byron Wren, and Darth Larson in the Henrik Empire. 
They are they are all here. This is going to be the lineup for 2022. Now, in terms of 2023 and beyond, um, El Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, and William Byron all are in contract years in 2022. In terms of those situations, I think Chase Elliott would be an easy extension for sure. Kyle Larson, I would say that should be an easy extension too, as long as he can get a primary sponsor for 2022. But that shouldn't be hard right now considering that Larson is look quite literally the hottest commodity in racing right now. Since almost anything Larson gets behind the wheel of now, he pretty much wins in. Whether it be a cup car, a modified, an outlaw car, or a sprint car, or a weight model, whatever the fuck you give him, he finds a way to make speed in it and win that some bitch. I swear to God, if Larson doesn't have a primary sponsor in 2022, I'm going to fucking lose it and flip shit. I don't care who sponsors Larson next year. Red Bull, Gatorade, fuck Kellogg's at this point. I don't give a fuck who sponsors Larson next year. Anybody. Just someone give Larson a primary sponsor, please. Because Larson deserves it. Larson has proved he has redeemed himself. Even though cancel culture and the SJWs won't admit it because they a bunch of salty bitches. But that's the truth. And honestly, if people still want to stay salty about Kyle Larson, do us all a favor. Take turn in your jackets and fuck off. But yeah, the only question mark I have really is William Byron. If Byron can keep his form up that he's had this year. Because Byron's had really, this is really Byron's breakout year this year. Because he got the win at Homestead. And then he and then that homestead went and opened up a stretch of eleven straight top ten finishes, which is the most by a driver at Henrik Motorsports since Jeff Gordon's ten straight in two thousand seven. His ten straight top tens that is in two thousand seven. So yeah, like easily the talent is there for Byron. Uh, easily the biggest move that helped revitalize Byron's career was reuniting him with Rudy Fugel. So the question is, can Byron keep this up and not fall off a damn cliff next year? That's the next question. But honestly, with where I'm looking at Henrik Motorsports at this point, I wouldn't change a damn thing on this team. I keep it the same. See, I wouldn't change anything. I think this lineup should be the exact same lineup hey, Henrik Motorsports has entering 2023 as low and so on. I mean, this is a very young roster. I mean, hell, this roster even had brought together the first ever one two three four finish in henrik motorsports history at dover and they almost did it again at the coke 600 this year the one problem is kyle bush had to fucking put his nose in in and be a thorn in everyone's side then again when isn't he and of course yeah we all know henrik motorsports has been on a massive momentum run with the four straight one two finishes and I believe if, if Henrik Motorsports goes one has another 1-2 finish at Nashville this weekend, that would be the fifth consecutive race that happens. And I believe that would be a new NASCAR record if it could be pulled off. So yeah, with this extension, now all the attention turns to Nashville, the inaugural race, which is ironically called the Ally 400. Alex Bowman sponsor is sponsoring this race too. So yeah, this is going to be a... So yeah gonna be a definitely a must watch race this weekend for sure first time in 10 years that nashville has hosted any nascar race of any kind and it all it also gives hope the tracks like rockingham and north wilkes bro that hey any track can be can come back from the dead just like that but yeah now the question with this extension is what happens when noah gregson now, for Noah Gregson, I think Noah Gregson's most, the most likely scenario I could see Gregson is more than likely if Junior Motorsports goes to Cup. If Junior Motorsports does go to Cup next year, which is rumored that Junior Motorsports might go to Cup next year, it's 50 50 at this point. If they do, it's more than likely that Gregson's going to get the ride because Michael and Ned is not there, because Michael and Ned is not good enough for the Cup Series. Josh Berry, well, he only has the one Xfinity win, so I wouldn't put Berry close to it. And Justin Allgaier, well, I think there wasn't a window for Allgaier to go back to Cup, but I think that window has completely slammed shut. There was a window of opportunity on Allgaier, and that window slammed shut a couple years ago. 
Like, I don't see all guy are getting that cup ride. So I think that narrows it down to Gregson. Or maybe they have someone else in the fold. We'll have to see. But yeah. So one of the big pieces in the silly season has fallen. As Bowman has extended with um, the 48 team. So I said Bowman would stay with Henrik Motorsports in my silly season. So that one's pretty much correct. So, so far in silly season, I'm one for one. Now the question is, what else happens in Silly Season? Like, for Silly Season, um, I'm going to be honest, I think Cendrick gets the 2 car and DeBenedetto is going to stay in the 21 car. Because it would make no goddamn sense for Cendrick, for DeBenedetto to go to the 2 car in 2022, only to get replaced by Cendrick like a year later. It would make no sense. So I think so I think with Kislowski, because Kislowski is rumored to be going to the 6 car at Roush Fenway Racing to become a co-owner of the team. So it become Roush, Fenway, Kislowski, whatever the fuck the team's going to be called next year. So yeah, definitely going to be an interesting silly season for sure. And of course, Kurt Busch has offers, of course, for 2311 Racing and Trackhouse Racing. Since they're looking to expand the two cars. So definitely the Kurt Busch sweepstakes are going to get interesting with those two teams. So yeah, going to be interesting to see what happens. And also what happens with the one car at um, Chip Ganassi. And what happens with um, the Cali Cup car. And we also found out, because it was announced we have a couple days ago, that GMS is also coming to the Cup Series in 2022. So there's another Cup ride. So yeah, 2020. So yeah, this silly season is getting pretty interesting, but this is the first domino to fall. So, that's, so, yeah, now we just wait and see what else happens on Silly Season. So, yeah, I'm glad Bowman's not locked up. I wanted Bowman locked up. Bowman's made that 48 car proud, has continued the legacy of that 48, making Jimmy Johnson and everyone proud, of course. So, now, with this out of the way, let's turn the attention to Nashville and let's go feast on another HMSW. So, yeah, just thought I'd come on here and give my quick thoughts on this real quick, so... For Gregson's situation, I think he either goes to the ru to that rumored Junior Motorsports Cup ride, and the number for that car is rumored to be 88. So if the Junior Motorsports does go to Cup Series next year or whatnot, the 88 more than likely is going to return. And let's be real, that Junior Motorsports Cup ride, it would be effectively a fifth Hendrick car in disguise. Kind of like how the uh, Wood Brothers 21 car is effectively a fourth Penske car in disguise. And the 2311 ride with Bubba Wallace is a, it's pretty much a fifth JGR car in disguise and whatnot. And yeah, we can go on with it. Plus, you know what? Every team needs a fucking bad boy in these days. Because you look at every team, almost every top team has a bad boy. SHR has Old Man Harvick. Joe Gibbs Racing has Kyle Busch. Penske has Kislowski and Logano, but it's more likely going to be Logano when Kislowski leaves to go to Roush Fenway Kislowski. And then Roush Fenway currently has Ryan Newman, but that's probably going to be Kislowski next year. And then Chip Ganassi, they did have Kurt Busch, but that's probably going to change next year. RCR has Austin Dillon, or maybe Reddick, or both. So yeah. And really at HMS, the only driver I would put even close to a bat to bad boy category is probably Chase Elliott. Or maybe Kyle Larson. One of those two. So yeah, just giving my quick thoughts on this. We're all like the extension. Now let's focus on Nashville. And if anyone's wondering, yes, I am working on the next part of the what if NASCAR had F1 points. Um, I, that part is coming. It's just taking some time because I've been busy with work. Like I said, the parts will come out whenever I, when it, depending on how fast I do my research and everything on it. Like I said, I'm not, I'm in no rush to complete that series. I guess I want that series to go at least a couple months. And I've been really, and I really, the last couple weeks, my work schedule has worked out perfectly to where I could get everything done pretty quickly. But next couple weeks, it goes differently. So yeah, give my quick thoughts. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. See you all for the Nashville Review in a couple days. Peace.